Hi, thank you for joining us once again here at SGTV. We're doing another episode here at Leicester College and we're joined by Neil and Phil who are lecturers Hi. here at Leicester College. Um, so we're going to be talking about AM2, um, not something I have uh, a lot of knowledge about, so I'm in your knowledgeable and capable hands here. Um, so, I mean, first of all, between you both, could you just give us a bit of a brief idea what AM2 actually is? Yeah, AM2 is the endpoint to assessment that all apprenticeships, apprentices go through at the end of the qualification. So when they've finished all the college work, theory, underpinning knowledge, they've collated their site diary and got all their evidence that they've got the skills, uh, they go and do uh, a 16 hour trade test, as, if, as we call it, where they'll put all the skills developed over the three years into practice. It's, I'm assuming that's not in one sitting, the 16 hours. No, it's over the three days. Yeah. Normally it's two and a half days, three days. <laughs> right, okay then. Um, so I understand you've got a bit of experience quite recently with AM2. Yes. Is that right. so you can keep teaching it or? Well, absolutely, yes. Uh, obviously, it's, if you're going to teach, then you need to have that qualification. And, and it's something as I went through, it's one thing that eluded me. So it was something time to step up and, and do that. Uh, conscious of the fact that yes it is a quite an intense three-day course but you know I was prepared for it so yeah I mean how how do you prepare for it in terms of because you've got to do it to teach and then how, how do you think that differs to what the apprentices what the learners are doing to prepare for the AM2s I don't think it should differ in any no. way it's the the fact that uh, you, you, you college staff and your employer need to work together with you it's a team effort and Whatever you're struggling with, uh, then the employer and the college staff need to support that way. And it's like any exam you've done at college. If you fail to prepare, you're going to prepare to fail. You've got to practice, you've got to be prepared, and you've got to be honest when taking this exam. Don't, don't jump in just for the qualification if you've not done any revision, any prep work. And I think in that respect, there is an awful lot of information out there, particularly from net services, with regards to what, you know when you sign up to be doing an AM2. There's more than enough information available to you, so you can you can so for example, a skills matrix. Um, you know you you need to be very honest when you're doing the skills matrix. So when you sign up to do an AM2, they will send you a form to do uh, to assess how good you are at certain aspects, the the composite, how much how good you are practical how good you are at bending piece of conduit, how good you are in the trunk, in tray, connections, etc. And I think it's very important to be honest and truthful um, because then you can identify the, the weak areas and you can work on that and you can work on that with colleges, with your tutors. Do you think a lot of people might lie and skip into it? Not out of trying to, more out of just trying to sort of think, They're, right, I need to be seen lot, to be good at this. A lot of young people, they, they want to become fully quali qualified. Yeah. And that a goal, that's the golden ticket, the AM2. And if, if you rush into it, uh, that's when I think quite a few young people fail uh, because they may have not done steel conduit, which is part of the AM2S. They may not have done that in their trades. Uh, they may not have uh, rewired eating controls, but, you know, they may be mainly domestic and commercial, they've not done eating controls, and that's part of the AM2. So they've got, it, this is the problem, you've got to be ready for the exam and you've got to be honest with everything you do. There's a skill scan that's broken down into details, it says, am I competent? Do I need support? And, and you know, students do tick, I'm competent, I'm competent, I'm competent in everything. That's why an employer needs to be on board reading it as well and say, well, I disagree with you here, or demonstrate where you've done that. Show me where you've done it. And it's not to be mean and, no, and, no, and say you're not no, good no, enough. It's, it's to, to help them, isn't it? It's yeah. to save them an awful lot of You really of money. have to be very honest with yourself with regards to your abilities to do this. And it's the information that's given to you prior to doing an AM2 is very specific as to what the requirements are of you to do this. So this, you must, must prepare yourself to be doing this and be honest. And I think, yeah, I think... Don't be afraid, you know, like once they're at work, stu once students have finished three years at college uh, and they've left the college, they're kind of like at work doing the finishing off the site diaries in that. They don't always come back to the college and say, could we out, could we practice this? But then again, you know, the employer should be supporting them. It's not just about taking on cheap labour, it's about supporting these uh, learners, getting them through the qualification. 
Uh, and, it, you know, don't be afraid to come back at night and speak to your lecturers. Can I come in and practice this? Is there any tips you can show me? Uh, there's lots of videos out there now. Netta got a great video package. I know uh, eFix and yourselves have been talking around the AM too uh, and what's involved in good tips and that. And learners need to take full advantage of what's out there before they go into it. And, and something else to, to advise as well is the fact that, yes, it's over three days, but three days goes by just like that. Um, you know, you have Pacific time to do Pacific uh, tasks. You've got and, to take it in a bit more. Oh, absolutely. You have to practice that. So you may well think your abilities are good. You can bend conduit. But the question is, can you do it to the standard that they expect within a required time? Yeah, and when the time's ticking, that's when it can get... That's when the pressure can get to it you, can't it? Yeah, so yeah. You practice, can't be, practice, practice, practice. Yeah. You can't be governed by the time. And it's about planning. And, and this is a great document. It's the pre-assessment check that you must complete to say you're ready. And... If you're honest in this and then you go for on the day to carry out the different tasks that are involved, then before you go, the week before, plan. You know, start planning. Where is it I've got to take this centre? So if you're driving to Birmingham, what's the route like? Leave an extra hour early so you're there. Revise before you go into the exam. Know each step. When you come home, relax. You know, take regular breaks. Stop the clock. Relax. Don't be afraid to do some revision at dinner time in that. Are, are there any do's and don'ts that you'd both recommend when it comes to preparing for the, for the AM2? Well, certainly, as, as Neil said, there's plenty of resources online. So we talked about the, the videos, the net videos that are online, the resources that there are. There's certainly plenty of people out there who uh, have had the experience of doing an AM2 and quite vocal in, in the respect of how, you know, how to do it right and how not to do it. Um, so I think basically, yeah, do your research. The, like I say, there's plenty of resources online. And I think really in terms of doing it, the exam itself, I think what you've got to be doing is working out methodically how you're going to approach this. You have to, again, it's time bound, so you actually have to think, well, how am I going to start? So with the composite, am I going to start with the three phase? Am I going to do the steel wild armoured? Um, you have to be methodical. You have to have a plan in your head how you're going to tackle this. Um, and the most important thing is when you are there, it's like a rabbit in a headlight syndrome, and it happens to the best of us, is that you think you go completely blank thinking, right, what have I got to do? You've got the documents there, you've got every description of what you've got to do, and the devil is in the detail. You must read exactly word for word exactly what it is that they're expecting you to do i suppose the one word that you miss out scanning something quickly could be the one thing that really That's trips right. you up isn't i think it? Trips, when, yes once you walk through that door get some paper and start making notes so if your first task is safe isolation then write the procedure down because when you're under pressure and an inspector's overlooking you just follow what you can write down. Learn to write the sequence of safe isolation. And these, they go in your pocket, not on the desk, not on the top of the consumer unit. Pocket, you won't fail. And then think, if I'm doing safe isolation, do I have to operate any light switches? Well, the answer is yes, because you need to check every strap off. So start practicing. Start writing the sequence down. Build a storyboard up. And then you go on to the installation and you're going to know what the install is. And so start planning. I'm doing uh, steel conduit. Well, what do I need to do? How do I bend it? Go through what you've learnt on site or in college and write it and follow it. Yeah? Um, it tells you what size fuse to pick in the spec. Don't just assume. Mm. Make sure if it says 2.5 cable, use 2.5. Don't think everything's twin in earth. It's that planning and preparation yeah. uh, beforehand. Again, it's, it's the, you feel pressured under time and therefore you make assumptions because this is how you do something on site. Don't think that this is how it should be done in your AM2 assessment. Uh, you must, must read the specification how they want you to do it, not how you would normally do it on site. Because, again, devil's in the detail. If you're not reading the specification of precisely what it is, so it may be the size of the conductors, it may be the type of breaker that you've got to use, you go by what the specification yeah. is, not assuming that and this then, is what you do. 
And I'm assuming those kind of specifications over the years might change and, and be tweaked. So yeah, what yeah, what's the, one person might have told you at some point might have changed. So well, the like AM, you say, just keep reading Yeah, the AM2 is the AM2, and it's, it's national. It doesn't change from one centre to another. We've now got the introduction of the AM2S that now... Uh, involves bending some steel conduit and PVC conduit. So that's, you've gone from a AM2E to, to AM2S. To S. Yeah. yeah, and that's the difference really, the conduit but the rest of the tasks remains the same. Even the conduit, though. I mean, I've, I've gone onto site with people who've been doing it for, yeah. for years, and they'll be like, oh, it's been a few years since I've done conduit. How do I do this again? Yeah. How do I get yeah. the, the right you know, that, thread on this? The and, practice before you come in, yeah. develop them little skill sets that you learnt when you were an apprentice. Because you might go into an exam thinking, oh, I did this a year ago, oh, I should be all right, yeah. and you get there and you're like, oh, how, what's that one thing I need to remember? And that's the one thing someone's going to point out yeah. if you've done it wrong, isn't it? And oh, yes. Yeah. This net document, it kind of like tells you more or less what the install is and what you've got to do. So when you're looking at the forms in the back of the regs book or the guidance note three, the condition reports, uh, the, um, the certificate, electrical certificate, the testing forms, then start writing this system out and look at the reference methods used. F start learning where they are in the on-site guide in the regs book because you're going to have to refer to them in the exam. There's no teacher there giving you a little nudge or a quick or try this. You've got to be competent. Yeah. What's yeah. the sort of cost of the AM2 currently, do you know? It's around £800. I think that, that's the ballpark for the, okay. the AM2 itself. And if you... if I mean, it's possible to fail the whole thing, mm -hmm. but yes. you're more likely to fail a certain module of that. Is that correct? Th yeah. That's right. If, yeah. you, if you fail a part of a section, so for example, if you fail, uh, for example, steel wired armour cable, uh, well, that's part of the three-phase section. So it means that you're not only going to go back and rectify and do the reset on steel wired armour cable, it means you're actually doing all the circuits with regards to that section, okay. including three-phase, so the, the direct online starter, etc. So you might find yourself, you may just for one reason do the steel wired armoured, but you're not rectifying the steel wired armoured, you're doing obviously all the wiring associated with that, and then also uh, another three-way circuit, which is the oh, okay. SY cable and, as well. And then each section, like, so if you have to go back and do a reset for like steel wired armoured, the cost of that could be £200 mm. that's payable by the employer or the, you know, the apprentice type of thing. But it's not the full price. It's not the full price. So because no. I think that's one thing I've heard people yeah. saying, oh, well, if I fail this, I've got to no. fork out another 800 or however no, much no, it is. No, it's broken down. But obviously, if you fail something like safe isolation, it's quite a lot of money. Because if you're driving from Leicester to Birmingham, uh, Met Centre to, to undertake it, you've got the travel there, the day loss of earning, and you failed on safe isolation mm. over leaving the key out, which is a bigger... Yeah, yeah or is that not a common one, do you that's think? That's a common one or not op operating switches. And, he, he, you know, have a look and it's quite clear they'll tell you uh, where students struggle in silly things they do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also because obviously they provide the test equipment for you uh, and you may well not be familiar with it, but it's, it's perfectly reasonable for you to ask the assessor, well, you know, is this how we use this equipment? Is this, you know, can we use this equipment? You know, you need to so clarify, you can clarify yeah, yeah. with your assessor. Particularly Take if you're a not break. familiar, if you're not familiar with that equipment, then, then yeah. there is perfectly reasonable uh, expectation for you to ask those. And in fact, in some cases, I would say the assessor is looking for you to make clarification of, you know, what you should be using. Yeah, so I suppose yeah. a lot of people probably don't know that. They're probably thinking, right, I'm in there. The assessor's there to just purely watch and assess. Yeah, no. But if, if you can ask them, can I just have a, a minute to, right. yeah. to learn this bit, bit of kit? I, or Use the on-site yeah. guide. So every, every apprentice, you know, rather than the lecturer writing down the test sequence on, on the board, every student should be using the on-site guide to look at R1, R2, what does this value mean? So when they're in the centre, if an inspector sees them using an on-site guide and checking their results against it, he's just going to think, wow, they know what they're doing. Yeah. If you write things down before you fill your forms in, so writing your steps, you know, L1 to L1, M to N, E to E, the assessor can see that you know what you're doing and you're checking your results. So the pen, write, take regular breaks, yeah, and again, adding to that, 
you, right. you're, even when you're writing out, so you've done your test and inspection and you're writing out the test schedule, well, you've got a guidance note three there, use it. Show them that you're using it. You know, it's like a driving test. Okay, you may well be able to drive, but even unless you're actually physically showing mirror signal maneuver, they don't know that you're doing it. So you, you really got to show and demonstrate that you're a competent enough to be using the resources that are available to you. And Guidance Note 3 is one of those resources you yeah. should be using. I'd also think an assessor, seeing someone stopping and making sure that they're actually thinking about what they're doing, mm. that, that's, that's when you know that they're, they're conscious yeah. about what they're working on and not just rushing into something blindly. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose a, yeah. a, an assessor's going to want to see that. Is, I've witnessed quite often a student tries to tackle it like they would an install, so they pull all the cables in for every circuit. Don't. Wire one circuit at a time. Finish it, terminate it. Start your next one. That way you're not under pressure, your timing, you know how long you got left. And again, you know, for me, have a look, what's the hardest cable to install? You know, it's steel wide armor is going to take your time, or the SY then work on them two first, so you put your time. And then if you've got to rush your PVC a little bit, you know, you can step the pace up. Yeah, you take, you take getting the yeah. manual heavy stuff but done one, first. One, yeah. one at yeah. a time, one, and it's one circuit. One set, you're right, absolutely. You've got to be methodical in what you do and finish what you're doing, the circuit at a time. Because if you leave anything, again, the pressure, you'll forget Terminations. it. You will forget it. I can guarantee if you leave something on circuit, I'll do that later, you will forget it yeah. and that will be a fail and then you're back again doing it all so at yeah cost of 200 pounds or more so yeah absolutely so so the trick is work methodically read all the information that's given to you and yeah. there's plenty of information out there as, Lots. as well yeah yeah, yeah. you got so. stuff produced by jay keyfic you know uh, sgtv there's, there's plenty out there. and again you can't beat what Netta doing yeah, now. Exactly. And Netta got two great apps out there on the testing inspection site that will really benefit you prior to going in undertaking it. We'll put some links in the description yeah. to, to help people watching this so for, for Net and things like yeah. that. So um, I want to thank you both, Phil and Neil, for inviting us down to, to Leicester College and taking the time to talk to us and our audience about things like the AM2s. Hopefully it's been of, of some use to you guys out there. Um, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Thank you. My all. pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, I wanted to get on that this blue makes me look slim, but not everybody. <laughs> you can add that in if you want. <laughs>